I love this book so much. You guys. Oh my god, it was so good. Hello everyone, my name is Lachlan and this video is going to be a book review for Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This book does take place in the world that Stephanie Garber created in Caraval. So if you've read that series, then you kind of have an idea of the writing style of this book, but you don't necessarily know what it's about. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what it's about as well as my spoiler free thoughts. And then at the end, I'll go into my spoiler thoughts. But as always, I will give a heads up before that begins. And I'll also include a timestamp so you can see it just when that starts. Just as a reminder, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. It means the world to me. I am new to booktube. So it just means a lot that anyone would be interested in watching my videos because I am new to this whole thing. Thank you so much for being here. I'm really, really really excited to talk about this book so let's get started. So this book follows Angeline Fox who is a huge romantic not just at heart but just all around she's a she's a romantic. She wants to believe in love at first. She just craves a happily ever after and to just you know have somebody to love and to be loved back. At the beginning of this book the love of her life is basically like stolen from her and he becomes engaged to somebody else and she is desperate to end that because she's madly in love with him and doesn't want him to marry anybody else obviously like who would want that so she makes a deal with Jax and if you read Carval then you're familiar with who that is so she makes a deal with him to end that wedding in exchange for him helping her end you know her ex-fiance's wedding he basically tells her like you have to kiss through other people whenever I tell you to and she's like that's so weird but okay like deal but after she makes the deal with him she kind of realizes like oh maybe this wasn't the best idea I shouldn't be making bar bargains with a fate but it is what it is like I've already done it and low-key regret it but like let's just move on and figure out what to do. As far as what this book is about, I'm not going to give you anything else because the synopsis is pretty vague. I feel like a lot of the times a synopsis can just give away too much and they sometimes do give away too much. But this one is just very vague and I really love that about it because it's better to go in blind. I guess I'll start off by saying I felt like a princess reading this book. It's the most magical thing in the world. Lately, I've been questioning my love for wife fantasy. I've just been like, am I growing out of it? And this book really just solidified the fact that I'm not. You can never be too old for YA fantasy, I think. I think it's great for all ages. I am just so in love with this book. I, I don't even have words. Like, I really don't. It took me out of this world. Caraval did the same thing for me. I remember being so engrossed in Caraval and it's funny because they're totally different vibes and in the best way. Caraval is very Alice in Wonderland-y, like it's like a mesh between reality and fantasy and this is in a lot of the ways like that but it's more of like a fairy tale fantasy you know once upon a time like it's once upon a broken heart is literally the perfect title for this because it just feels like one of those like once upon a time fairy tales and i adored it so much stephanie's writing is so captivating and the characters are just so likable i couldn't put this down like if you love the carval series you're probably going to love this and another thing about it is like i didn't find this cheesy at all which is very telling because it's such a book that I think is appropriate for almost all ages. This book was similar to Carval in a way that like it makes you question what's real and what's true. If you're a fan of fairy tales in general, like you're going to be obsessed with this book. I love fairy tales so much. I also really love the Cruel Prince series. It's not anything like the Cruel Prince at all, but it is in a way that like the Cruel Prince is geared towards those people who are in love with fairy tales. So if that's you, stop what you're doing and read this book because even if you haven't read Caraval, you really can read this first. I wouldn't advise that. Like that's not what I recommend. I definitely re recommend you reading Caraval first because I think that you'll appreciate the Prince of Hearts just that much more. Like you'll appreciate his character 20 times more. But if you really just don't want to read Caraval, if you never have the intention of reading it, and you want to read this, definitely do. Stephanie Garber's writing is just very, very whimsical and magical and I find it amazing. I just feel like you can't read this without reading Carball. I 
also really love the scenery in this book. I mean, I can go on for days about Stephanie Garber's writing. It is just so magical. I really, really liked Evangeline. I just thought she was so smart. Like she was very self-aware. This is third person, but I loved following her so much. Like I loved being in her head in a sense, because even though it is third person, like you're still you know, very much in their head with the narrator. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I loved it. If I had anything negative to say, it'd be the freaking cliffhanger. <laughs> Which that's not really like, I mean, some people consider cliffhangers to be like really annoying. This cliffhanger I didn't really find to be that annoying just because I love the book so much. But if I am not loving a book and there's also a cliffhanger, then I just get annoyed. If I'm starting a series and I'm not like fully in love with it, I won't really want to read the next book. The first book in a series is really telling to me. And if I don't love it, then I'm not going to continue reading the series. I can see how like if someone were to not love this book, the cliffhanger might like be like, oh, okay. But I don't know. I just think that for a first in a series, I think it was really wrapped up. Like there was a lot of things that I don't know, I, I was worried that wasn't going to get tied up and I was like, oh, okay, that got tied up. So that's great. But there are a lot of questions that you have after this. Like I have so many questions and I'm very concerned. I mean, not so much as concerned as I am like, what is life? Like what is happening? Because Stephanie just really makes you question the truth and facts. Another thing is this book was filled with plot twists. Stephanie just took me by surprise so many times. There were maybe like one or two things that were pretty predictable, but like overall, I wasn't disappointed at all. This book exceeded my expectations 100%. And I had really high expectations. It's more like a suspenseful fairy tale story than anything so if that appeals to you just stop what you're doing and read this like i'm telling you it's so good uh, with that said i think i'm going to discuss spoilers now because there are just a few things that i need to talk about that i was not prepared for when i read this book and i'm going to talk about them now so if you haven't read this book definitely read it and then come back and we can discuss it i'm going to talk about spoilers now so here's your warning so i didn't mention this in the spoiler free section because I do consider this a spoiler. The fact that it even has vampires in it, I had no idea that this was going to contain vampires. I mean, the cover doesn't give it away, the title doesn't give it away, the, the synopsis does not give you that. It's like a hidden prize almost. It took me such by surprise that I was like so excited. I was like, oh my god, there's vampires in this book. Like, I had no idea chaos, that fate, I had no idea he was a vampire. So like, I don't know, maybe am I like stupid for not knowing that? Like, did other people know that? Like, did you know that? I, I didn't know that. So I was completely thrilled with the scenes when they went to go see Chaos. I thought those were scenes were just so atmospheric and not really spooky because this is not a spooky book, but it was just very atmospheric. It just set the perfect vibes and I was just, I was here for it. Like 100% my favorite thing in this book were those scenes. Also, like, Jax, I'm freaking in love with him, dude. Like, he is so grumpy and I love him. I'm obsessed, okay? I'm still very curious as to, like, what Jax feels about Evangeline um, because I know at the end, like, it was, you know, like, basically Evangeline goes through all these, like, things. Like, oh, Jax just, like, used me so that I can open up that gate or whatever. And... I mean, obviously Jax was not there to like defend himself, so we don't really know. I mean, I'm sure that that is the case, but because it just kind of like makes sense. But at the same time, I'm really curious to see like how he thinks about Evangeline because so many times Evangeline would be like describing how he was looking at her and I would be like, oh my god, I like I couldn't take it. It was just so, I just love him so much. Whenever they went to go see Chaos and... Chaos is flashing his fangs at her and then <laughs> Jack says stop flashing your fangs. I'm the only one who gets to bite her. I was like uh, uh, uh. I'm here for Jax. This book gave me everything that I wanted. Oh, and then dude whenever he was freaking a bit and like was about to turn into a vampire or whatever I was getting so stressed out because I was like, okay, one, I didn't see that coming. Like, I didn't think he was going to be bitten. And I was like, no, I don't want him to turn into a vampire. Like, it's Jax. He can't be a vampire. And then obviously, like, he didn't turn into a vampire, which I was happy about. He was, like, so close to biting her. And it was just so good. 
Oh my god, it's so good. I'm obsessed. He's just like kind of possessive over Evangeline and I love it. He's like, promise me you'll never let him bite you. <laughs> She's like, I won't ever need to if you tell me what you want inside the Valerie arch. I just love these characters so much. Okay, so then before that, whenever she saw like Luke is a vampire, like I did not see that coming either. I was like, oh my God, like poor Evangeline. I've, I felt so bad for her. She, you know, is still pretty much in love with Luke and it turns out that he like really never like truly loved her. Or if he did, it just like wasn't enough to like break the curse. And then he turns out to be a freaking vampire. And then Sweet talks her to like, you know, give him something to get out of the cage with. And then after he gets out of the cage, he just like attacks her. It's like, wow, but, like poor Evangeline. She's gone through a lot. Her stepsister is like a total like sleazy, untrusting, you know, person. And then there's Jax who, you know, she's like started to be friends with. And she also doesn't know if she can trust him. And like Luke, like the love of her life, she's like trying to help him. And then like, he's just like, ah! like obviously, you know, he just was talking to her so that she would let him out of the, like the cage. I almost said kennel. The whole like Evangeline and Jack's dynamic was just so good. Um, like on page 312, when he's like, Evangeline, stop looking at me like that. You're making it this much more difficult. Jack spoke between clenched teeth. I'm obsessed with his character. Like truly, truly obsessed. And there's not even a ton of romance in this book. I loved it when they were like talking about their personal stuff. They were almost having like a heart to heart and he starts talking about Donatella and he's like, she's not the kind of girl you sing about. And um, Evangeline is like, oh, like, mm. So we also have Marisol who like, we, I definitely like didn't trust her the entire time. But Marisol is a complicated character too because her mother has basically verbally abused her in her entire life. So she's like turned into like this kind of like messed up, you know, flawed character. So this is on page 347 and Evangeline says, Evangeline believed in love and fairy tales and happy endings because that was what her parents had taught her. But Agnes told Marisol that she was unattractive and unwanted. Was that why she had done all of this? And I put a blue tab there. Because that to me was so sad because it's just kind of like, it's so true. Parents can really shape the outlook on a person. So like if your parents, you know, tell you that like you're never amount to anything, then you'll probably grow up thinking that you'll never amount to anything. And it'll probably take you into adulthood to realize that that's not true. But if parents shape a child into thinking that the world is a great place and you know, they're so beautiful and like lovely or whatever, then that child could grow up thinking like very naively and not realizing like the atrocities in the world. So it's just like crazy because like Evangeline was just very like hopeful and just wanted to fall in love and just had this very kind of like positive, naive outlook. And then there's Marisol who is like got the basically the opposite and Marisol is like, we don't all get to be happy and it's just like a very sad thing and so I, I, I couldn't hate Marisol. I think she was a flawed, complex character. I think she could have been a little bit more developed, but just for the sake of the story, I think she, like her character was perfect and I don't have any complaints about it. But it's just not shocking to me that she did what she did because her mother literally told her her entire life that she was ugly and that she would never like find someone that loved her. And so like why else? I don't know. I don't really blame Marisol. I mean, I... I don't agree with what she did, but I'm also just like, I can't hate her for it. I, you know what? I take that back. I did end up hating Marisol. So they were kind of like having a heart to heart. It was not really heart to heart, but like Marisol basically confessed that she, you know, bewitched Luke and Evangeline could have been like, oh, you know what? I hate you so much. Like I can't ever like forgive you for that, but she didn't. And then so Evangeline like came clean to Marisol and then Marisol immediately was like, so angry and was like you believe you let me believe that was cursed and then like yelled at the guards to come get her I was so pissed so you know what I take it back I really like was like you know what screw you Marisol like you're petty for that like I don't care how bad of a childhood somebody has had you know it comes to a point where they accept responsibility for being a shitty person I don't know I just think Marisol is just like kind of a shitty person so at the end whenever it was revealed that Apollo was alive I didn't see that coming a lot of this I didn't see coming the whole Tiberius thing I kind of saw coming but the thing is is like do we even know because Jax wasn't Jax the one that poisoned Apollo because like 
Tiberius kind of admits to it. I don't know, the whole ending to this book was just, it just made me question everything. I was like, wait, so like, did Tiberius or, and I know like, Evangeline, uh, like the blast page on page 402, she basically like, kind of blames everything on Jax, but I don't know. Like it says like Jax is not her friend, but he taught her that she could open inner door she wanted. I, I think that he was her friend. Like, I think, like, oh my god, I'm so excited for the next book. And it's killing me, the fact that, like, this book was just released. Who knows how long we're going to have to wait. But, like, oh my god, it was so good. If you have read this book, can we talk about it, please? Like, what do you think? And, like, I'm so curious to see when Apollo, like, wakes up, like, what is going to happen? So, I will say, like, Marisol said that she, you know, had put the spell on Luke, but that she didn't put it on Tiberius, and I kind of believe, I think I believe her. So, on page 401, it says, but suddenly Evangeline wasn't sure that Marisol had been the one to put a spell on Tiberius. Jax could have willed it to frame her. So, it's just, like, a lot of, like, questioning, like, what is the truth? basically don't know anything like nothing is for sure I think that's like the epitome of the ending of this book is like nothing is for sure I also love that we saw more of the fates in this book five out of five stars for sure it's amazing I freaking loved it I'm going to reread it like I read the first couple chapters twice like the first eight chapters I read twice and then some chapters in between I read twice because it's just so good and it's also kind of a quick read like it's only 400 pages and it's very addicting. I found it to be very addicting. So five out of five stars for sure. I love this book so much. You guys, it was so good. Definitely one of my favorite reads of all year. And I don't say that lightly because I've read so many good books this year. So if you made it this far, you can leave a little fox emoji for, you know, Evangeline's nickname, a little fox. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later with another video.